For me, Loki Season 1 was the best TV we've seen from the MCU so far. Does Season 2 measure up? Also, look how cool my sweater is. My brother's girlfriend made it. It's pretty sweet. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking Season 2 of Loki. I've watched Episodes 1 through 4. There will be no spoilers in this review. We're going to save that for some YouTube shorts as the episodes come out. But first off... I want to talk about this season. So Loki finds himself in a battle for the soul of the TVA along with Mobius, Hunter B-15, and some new characters as he navigates an ever-expanding and dangerous multiverse in search of Sylvie, Judge Rinslayer, Miss Minutes, and the truth of what it means to possess free will and glorious purpose. Of course, Tom Hiddleston is back as Loki, and maybe my favorite character, Owen Wilson. Wow is Mobius. Wow. I'm only doing that once through this whole thing. Wow. Twice. I think there is a notable difference between season one and season two, and that is some of the directors at play here, two in particular, Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, who brought us projects like Synchronic, The Endless, Resolution. And so while all of the puzzle pieces from season one are still here, and it still has that same atmosphere and that almost haunting feeling that you get while going through specifically episode one. You're like this, I'm getting horror vibes. I don't know what it is. Nothing about this story says horror, but I'm just getting those vibes as I'm watching the eeriness and the creepiness of this situation with the TVA and where we left Loki off at the end of last season, he's not where he thought he should have been. And I said this is a spoiler-free review, but there's something going on there that he has to figure out, try his best to fix, and that relationship with Mobius and really all the relationships are coming in handy. And one new character specifically... That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Ki Hoi Kwan had an amazing year last year with everything ever all at once, and there was a big resurgence. And of course, I was excited to see he was announced to be in Loki Season 2. And every time he pops up, maybe it's just because I love him so much at this point, but his character, the significance of that role, and how he comes in and makes such a huge difference in pretty much every scene that he's involved in, it seems like such a minor part at first, but by the end of the first episode, you're like, no, I actually like this character. And kind of the arc of where he goes as the season progresses, it's a little more meat on the bone with this character than I expected. I thought it was just gonna be a great performance, but it was a little bit of both, which is nice. Real quick, another new player, Raphael Casal from Blind Spotting. I was excited to see his role in season two, and I was a little iffy on his character in episode one. I'm like, ah, I just don't know. But there's a lot for him to do in episode two, and there's one moment where there's a back and forth with both Loki and Mobius to where I said, all right, You've turned me around with the performance, and really the role of this character is uh, much better than I anticipated after just a lackluster part in episode one. So, all of this being said, I'm going back to that first episode, and while there are a lot of great ideas at play, the atmosphere is captured by these new directors, and the writing is working for building up these characters, or building on these characters from what we got in season one, the first episode of season two is a little all over the place with its ideas. And it had me worried, it had me a little nervous because while it looks great, it feels great, you love these characters, you're back in the zone, you're back in the groove. I'm watching episode one thinking, there are just so many different conversations about the multiverse, what's happening, the TVA, their role, new characters, what's happening with Loki, what's happening with Mobius and Loki. And it all just feels a bit scrambled and unfocused and it had me nervous. I didn't hate the episode. I still like it better than, what was it, episode three or four from season one that I just wasn't a big fan of. But episode two, again, no spoilers. Once we solved the problem from episode one, and admittedly, I did kind of see how they were going to solve it, so that was unfortunate, but you get into a drastically different type of story. You've shifted locations entirely, and our focus has changed. Now, some people are going to see that as jarring, like, ah, this. why does it feel so different from episode one? But where episode one was a bit of a rough start for me, I was on board with this. And the one thing I'll say about episode two is the dialogue is juicy. There's some great dialogue. One moment in particular with Loki, and we know where his priorities are as a character at this point, where his mindset is. He's really shifted from who he was to who he is now. But there's a moment where we start to get that old Loki that we know and love slash hate. And I'm like, that's actually really great. And the writing specifically for season two for Loki himself is 
good, and we're really just starting to scratch the surface in episodes two and three, but it slowly starts to get to where we were in season one, and I'm thinking, all right, we're back. We are back, baby, with Loki specifically and the role of Mobius, the snappy dialogue, the quirkiness, the relationship between he and Loki. It's all there, man. It looks great. It feels great. The atmosphere. And then you get to episode three and we start to dig deep into a different side of the story. So again, I use the word scattered. That may apply to this season as a whole so far, but through the first three episodes, episode three, I think is finally starting to give us light as to what this season is going to ultimately come to. And you can see the plan starting to come together. You can see how everything is beginning to make a bit more sense. Now, all of the behind the scenes drama, yes, Jonathan Majors is back. That was basically told to us. And you have somebody like Sylvie. And I think each of those characters get their episode within these first four to where they are prominent and in focus. And that is something that had me worried at first. But as it played out, I was kind of a fan with that setup. Tara Strong is back as Miss Minutes. I think the villainous side of the story and really the antagonists versus the protagonists and where their loyalties may lie and how everyone is not exactly who you think they're going to be. Are they fully on this side of the fence or could they be flipped? Could their mindset be flipped? Could we change what the future is supposed to be? We were told what that future would be at the end of season one. And I don't fully have the answers yet. There's a reason that they only gave four episodes to the press because when episode four ends, I'm sitting back going, no, no, come on. Why, why do you have to stop? Why do you have to stop? It's time to stop. So it did its job of making me want more. And I want more. After seeing the end of episode four, I'm sitting here like I'm salivating. Can you give... Can you give me something, please? But I think the question everyone wants the answer to is season two as good as season one. And to this point, I would say I think season one is stronger. I think there's a better narrative flow to season one. Why are you using all these bougie words, Austin? Get to the point. Is it fun? Is it entertaining? And yeah. Yeah, it is. Is the best thing we've seen so far out of the MCU? No, it's not. Is it bringing MCU out of the secret invasion slump for the time being? In my opinion, yes, this is entertaining television from week to week, and I watched all four in a row, sorry, but from week to week, I think this is going to be one you're going to want to come back to because they always manage to slip something in at the end that makes you go, all right, I need it. I will say, though, as much as I like Benson and Moorhead as directors, I do think season two so far is lacking that sense of anything is possible, right? Season one, you didn't know what was going to happen next. You didn't know where the story was going to go. And this season feels a little more standard, right? Some more tropes that we know from the MCU and not as big, grand, interesting, but wild of a story. Now, I think we are getting to that point, but Kate Heron, as a director, I do kind of miss that presence. So all in all, a little up and down at the beginning, it's starting to find its footing. I'm not going to give it a number just yet, but uh, this is definitely a series you're going to want to tune into to see what's going to happen next. And if you want to support this vid, drop it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Loki Season 2 is full of surprises, captivating relationships, and it maintains the brilliantly stylish atmosphere from the first season. It definitely takes a bit to settle in, so a bit of patience is required, but it finds its footing. Let's hope it keeps that footing for the last two episodes. You guys would like me to be back to talk about spoilers when it's all said and done let me know appreciate you so much for watching are you watching loki season two on disney plus